Time to take your wealth to the next level. Welcome to Learn Wealthy, your go-to channel for real estate insights, market charts, and golden opportunity. Let's build wealth together. How's it going, everyone? I hope you all are doing great. It's me again, James Santiago, your host at Learn Wealthy. Today's episode is going to be juicy as we explore an investing strategy called dollar cost averaging. Stay till the end because we're going to review historical charts and see how dollar cost averaging actually performed in some indexes like S&P 500. And I'm going to show you how I modified this strategy for my own investments. But first, let's understand what this dollar cost averaging is. Dollar cost averaging is an investment strategy where you consistently invest a fixed amount of money into a particular asset like stocks, bonds, or mutual funds at a regular interval, say weekly or monthly, regardless of the asset price. Let's break it down. Here's how it works. Number one, fixed amount. So you decide on an amount you want to invest each time, say $100 and you stick to that whether the market is up or down or sideways. Number two, regular intervals. You invest this fixed amount on a regular schedule every week, month, or quarter. You can automate this in, an, in many brokerage accounts. And number three, market fluctuations. When the market is down, your $100 buys more shares because the price is lower. When the market is up, your $100 buys fewer shares because the price is higher. Number four, average cost. Over time, the cost of the shares you own average out. This can lower your overall risk because you're not trying to time the market. Benefits of dollar cost averaging. Number one, it reduces emotional stress in investing. Since you invest the same amount regularly, it takes the emotion out of trying to predict the market, the highs and the lows. Have you ever taken a huge lump sum in position in the stock market and had anxiety from it? This is exactly what the strategy is trying to eliminate. Number two, discipline approach. It encourages consistent investing, which is key to long-term financial growth. And number three, accessible. You don't need a large sum of money to start. Even small, regular investments can grow significantly over time. All right, now let's talk about the drawbacks. There's a potential for lower returns. If the market consistently goes up, dollar cost averaging might result in a lower return compared to a lump sum investment. It's not foolproof. It doesn't guarantee profits or project against losses, especially in a declining market. It also encourages an ostrich behavior to just bury your head in the sand and forget about it and not knowing anything about the world because you're not staying up to date with the market. Why do 90% of our viewers keep coming back? Because they don't want to miss a thing. If you're loving what you're learning, make sure to hit that subscribe button and join our awesome community. We drop new, exciting content regularly that's designed to keep you ahead of the curve. And hey, we really want to hear from you. Drop a comment below and let us know what you think or what you'd like to see next. I bet you didn't know this, but... Actually, you probably did. All right, folks, listen up. Before you go putting your life savings into unicorn startup stocks or revolutionary banana peel futures, let's make one thing clear. This is not investment advice. Seriously. All right. So this is a simple example of the dollar cost averaging. Let's say um, you committed to investing $100 every month in a stock ticker symbol LW. And on the first month, the price of the stock is $10 per share. So you were able to buy 10 shares. The second month, cost of the stock is $5 per share. And you're able to buy 20 shares. And on the third month, the stock price is $20 per share. So you're only able to buy 5 shares that month. Bummer. And so you basically invested $300 so far at this point on that $300 you were able to buy 35 shares and the average cost per share is $8.57 that's basically the basic idea of it please subscribe to learn wealthy if you're learning a lot in this video and please like this video if you like it all right let's go to historical data it always amazes me 
you know how they say it's not about timing the market, it's about time in the market. But it always amazes me that, let's say if you invested in S and P five hundred in about nineteen twenty nine, it's about five hundred. Uh, let's say it's about five hundred dollars per share, right? Five hundred four. Let's say you invested at five hundred four dollars, and you want to apply the rule time time in the market, so. You kept that investment for fifty five years. That's some serious time in the market, and in fifty five years at nineteen eighty four, your uh, investment is still about just five hundred dollars, a little bit under five hundred dollars. So it just shows here that S and P five hundred from nineteen twenty nine to nineteen eighty four, it's crap. That five hundred dollars that you initially invested. Would have been four hundred sixty-four dollars. So, it's not always time in the market. That's why, as a real estate cash flow investor, and even as a dividend stock investor, I always keep updated and and um, I always try to see what's going on in the market. And um, if you keep watching uh, Learn Wealthy, I will take you along with my journey to stay on top of the market. S and P five hundred with dollar cost averaging. Let's say on that span of time, nineteen twenty nine to nineteen eighty four, where if you just initially invested five hundred dollars for fifty five years, or you would have lost money. Let's say what if the dollar cost average that? I have this um, website called offdollarsanddata.com. So it's it you can input stuff in it, and it's gonna give you a dollar cost average on from history. The data dot data comes from Robert Schiller's website and does not account for taxes, fees, and transaction costs. All right. So 1929 to 1984, let's say you invested from January to January. All right. And you invested $100 every month. Calculate. You would have contributed about $129,000. Sorry. And you'll have a final nominal value of about $3 million. But this includes all the, the dividends that are reinvested. That's why I like to invest in dividend stocks. If you just invested $500 in S&P at this time and let it grow for 55 years, you come out negative. You come out losing. But if you reinvest your dividends, then you actually make more. But here in Learn Wealthy, we always have to adjust our investments uh, based on inflation. So, so it's right here. Final inflation adjusted value is about five hundred seventy three thousand seven hundred twenty two. Um, so adjusted to inflation, you still make this decent amount of money. That's what um, dollar cost averaging does. And the way I do my dollar cost averaging, if the value of the stock is a little bit lower, I try to buy a little bit more extra. Other than I have that fixed automatic investment of $100, right? Let's say, for example, $100. Let's say uh, I see the stock is significantly lower. I would buy like, triple for that month, triple that $100. Like I would buy th 300 or 400 Sometimes it doesn't have to be historically low or it can be like a 52-week low and I'll buy like triple. And another thing how I personalize my dollar cost averaging is I usually just invest in dividend stocks and not growth stocks. I'm not really a gambler. There's two things in investing. You're trying to gain on the upside and you're trying to protect yourself from the downside. A lot of people get greedy and don't know how to protect themselves from the downside. And a lot of times the money we're investing are money we work hard for. So, you know, I'm not the gambling type. I don't even, I don't like gambling in Vegas. That's why I mostly invest in solid dividend stocks and dividend aristocrats, companies that have been there for like half a century or a century. And that most likely are raising their dividends every single year historically so that's where i apply my dollar cost averaging and i'm not that a big fan of this uh method but i i do it with uh, dividend stocks i hope you enjoy that and picked up valuable knowledge that you can use for more real estate macro and finance please subscribe so we can all learn wealthy together i'll see you in the next video